Bring it back. Hi guys and welcome back to another video on Ostriv. So if you remember from last time's episode we made a start on our little village. We managed to get six houses built. We got a blacksmith constructed, a factory and our forester and placed a clay pit and started to collect some hay. We had quite a productive first uh, episode and got quite a lot done. However, it's now August, time is starting to run out before we hit winter and I want to get our peasants out of our tents and into some proper houses. So we are heading towards finishing our seventh house and we've got the plot for our eighth house mark marked out. So let's crack on with the game and get our peasants up and building. Um, I don't know if I probably sort of pointed out last time, one of my favourite little things is this little cart park. So instead of having uh, one peasant permanently attributed to being like a labourer or a carter whose only job is to move things around and transport things, there's like a village pool of carts, so there's three carts available. Um, you can build more, you can build a, uh, what is it? a cart parking stand to build more carts when the village gets larger. But then anyone who needs access to a cart, so if a builder needs some clay for his house, like in this case, they can take the cart, go over to the clay pit, collect some clay, and then transport it down to the, the house. And then it'll drop the cart back off in the centre in case anyone else needs it. And it's just quite a cool little feature uh, and works really well. It gives it Again, it's just all about this sort of dynamic game rather than uh, everything being fixed and predetermined. As well as like the free placement, you know, the fact the buildings aren't on a grid. You can place them at any crooked and funny angle you want as long as you're not actually you know you can't build them in the water but you know you can build them uh, there's not a grid like banished for example has uh, a grid system which you know, makes things kind of look a uh, predetermined and unnatural and i don't like that and i like this sort of much more uh, natural feel the way things develop like this house here is not in line with this house and that's how things would develop in real life in this period of time and that's for me makes it a much better game and I do love the roads as well. I mean, like, for example, you can see here the bloke at the factory. Uh, he needs reeds from the river to build up his uh, his thatch. And so he obviously regularly has to walk down to the river. And you can see the route he has, takes every day as he walks out of his factory and has worn a nice thick path down to the reeds at the river for him to collect them. And I like that sort of thing. And that's that, for me, is one of the best things about this game. You can see where... Uh, these are the remnants of where the tents used to be around here but because these uh, tents have now moved into houses and the people don't live there anymore the roads have slowly started to fade and they're slowly being overtaken by the grass again because they're not used they don't need to be used anymore and it's again it's just all this dynamic uh, sort of natural development of game I know I keep sort of banging on about that but it's true it really is so let's bung things into a slightly fast forward mode we've got two houses to go as we come to the end of August. Um, I know we get snow at some point. I'm not quite sure when we expect to see snow. I probably expect around November, December time. So we should get these people all in houses by then without too much trouble. Um, we've got one more house which we need to build. I'm not sure where I'm going to put him. And we could put him around here somewhere. Or we could sort of put him as a sort of sneaky little lone person down here. I think that would look kind of nice. Yeah. Put him there. Not a particularly convenient spot in terms of city planning, but for that sort of random chaotic look, sort of what we want. Um, I'm going to try. I've left sort of a bit. Have left a bit of room in the village centre because this is where I want sort of our production buildings. So things like thatchers, the carpenter's going to go here. Uh, we've got things like a shoemaker, a weaver, and all this sort of stuff. And these are things I want to be able to take advantage of. This little sort of large, vast, open expanse is probably where most of the farming is going to happen. I'm going to set up wheat farms. Um, I believe we also have access to hemp farms, which can then be used with the tailor's workshop to produce clothes. Oh, the weaver produces textile from hemp, and the tailor then produces clothes from hemp. <laughs> so we've got a whole range of buildings. We've got a tannery, produce leather from hides, which needs access to the cow shed, which needs access to the hay to feed the cows. So again, we get these huge chains that we need to be able to produce the sort of high-end goods that we want. We also have um, huge trading posts. So, uh, this I'm going to be a while before I build this building, but you see, you can build a large trading post. And I believe, I've not yet tried it, this will then give you access to the other villages. So, this is our world map at the moment. Obviously, because this is just Alpha 1, it's in its sort of very simplest format. But we have other places nearby, like Murpha, 
Um, somewhere I can't say. Balika, Balarakia. Six days away. And Derechia. Derechia, anyway. Somewhere else, which I can't say. And when we said of a trading post, we can trade with them. And we can probably get things uh, that we want, like iron and that sort of thing. So it's also note for the sort of amount of nails it would produce, we've only used 0.5 iron. So we're not really requiring very much iron to produce all these nails that we're using. So even though you only start with 10, you don't need to worry about running out immediately. As long as you don't start producing vast amounts of horseshoes and that sort of thing, other things that you don't need. So we're on construction of the final house. It's the last people there in their tent. They'll soon be, uh, as I was actually building his own house, like I saw his in the construction industry. The last house on the outskirts of the village, and then everyone is going to be housed before winter. And then we can start to look at building our boatyard and our fishery. Although, um, given the timing of the month, probably not long after I immediately finish the boatyard, I expect that the lake of the uh, river is going to freeze over and we won't be able to do any fishing anyway. But at least we'll know we'll be ready for when summer comes around. So let's have a quick look at um, a fishing dock and a boatyard. I think we'll probably build the, build the boat yard first. Um, it does snap to shore uh, in this case because obviously it wants to uh, be able to access the water. Um, I think we'll build this over the side sort of nestling in amongst the trees down here. We'll go for somewhere like that. As the house is coming to a close, once the workers are finished here, we can go and start construction on the boat yard. Again, boat yard is going to require a worker to actually build the boats. Um, a fishery is going to require a worker to man the boats. So this is all going to be starting to use up more and more people, of which we don't really have many spare. This is why you have to sort of uh, try and get everything built quite quickly. So our house should soon be finished. We've got a couple of labourers who are carrying the supplies to and from the house at the moment. They're bringing in the thatch for the roof. So he's putting in all the roof strips now. There we go, he's doing a good smashing that building up. And then he's going to put the thatch on. Excellent two and the last one awesome final house built so these people should be moving out the tent which they are so that is everyone out of the village center now which is exactly what we wanted so we can get our fishery uh, built up and then we can look at building maybe a town hall here in the center of the village as we continue to grow it's starting to get colder obviously because everyone's got fires going nice little wisps of smoke billowing from the chimney look pretty good I do like our little village. I think this game looks really great. The graphics are very nice. Not overly complicated, but particularly when set around the river. I think the river is probably one of the, the best things. It just looks so beautiful. The way it sort of weaves and turns. It's not just a straight line. And our village is sort of nestled in amongst the trees and around the river. I think it looks great. So, let's carry on. Uh, people are now moving the stuff down for the boatyard. Uh, I also like the fact the peasants actually have to carry the... Uh, sort of pillars into the water and set them in just the foundations I think they have to start to go deeper yeah the people have to start to wade out into the water to place down the pillars that's another thing i really like about this game is the fact that the peasants that they, they carry the the bits of wood and equipment they need to the spot where they're actually going to build them um it's not perfect but so many games is normally just um you know a, a man man or woman sat in the corner of the building hammering and hammering at one little small piece of wood in the corner and the building just slowly finishes itself but here the people are actually taking the materials they require to the spot they want it and are working on it that way and i think that works really well there we go so they've got like the pier part of the uh, work set up also like how you have a flow chart of the materials required so they have, have wood and nails which is the two things that the boatyard requires houses also require thatch and other places require clay as well, so sometimes things require all four. Our well is still holding up pretty full, which is good. So labourers, so when people are working, that's constructing, and labourers are carrying the supplies to the building. So this man is just uh, hammering these uh, pontoons together. We've got like the launch ramp here by the looks of it. Oh, that's the proper launch ramp. Oh, wow, brilliant. And I suspect there's going to be a little sort of hut in this corner as the, the worker's hut. Putting in all the sort of uh, wall supports, I believe, there. 
it is certainly a game that you do have to do a reasonable amount of fast forwarding on, I think. I mean, you could play it in um, slow mode, and that would be fine. But particularly given it takes, you have quite a limited population at the start, I think you sort of have to speed things up. Otherwise, well, otherwise it would be very long gameplay. Certainly not ideal for a YouTube video, but something I guess you could do if you, you know, prefer the more realism element and want things to go a bit slower. There we go, they're starting to get this thing finished now. Shouldn't be much more to do to it. There we go. Okay, so we have a boatyard. Um, there's no point yet assigning anyone to it, I don't think, because um, you can't directly build boats. So let me just place this fishery and then I'll show you what I mean. So I'll place the fishery there. So if I assign a worker, um, I can't just click build fishing boat, that sort of thing. I have to wait. Once we've got the fishery, um, I can assign a worker and say that that worker requires a boat and I can request the boat to be built. And once I've put in that sort of um, request for a boat to be constructed, the boatyard will then supply that request by building the boat. So I, there's no point assigning anyone to the boatyard until we've got the fishery built and uh, have requested a boat to be built. Similar sort of construction, they're placing pillars and I guess they're going to place pillars out into the into the water, into the river uh, for sort of like a pontoon for the boat to moor on. Quite a little complex array of roads being built up now, haven't we? Uh, some of the older roads are starting to die off a little bit, ones that aren't used anymore. Ones here. Uh, the old uh, the old tent ones have now just basically completely disappeared. <laughs> our Thatcher's route is so well trodden. It's <laughs> and also our little wood people here, look. Oh, they've actually cleared like a little bit of a hole into the back, back of the uh, forest here as they've been chopping down the trees. There's a felled tree there. It's not been collected yet probably because they're resting. So, oh, there they are. They're off to collect the wood there. Look. And people are going to collect uh, the chopped logs from the wood to use in the construction of the building. Which is good. Nice to see progress being made. Once we've got these fisheries up, I'm also going to look at building some more, uh, well, probably not more, but one more uh, house. So that we have a spare house for immigrants to move into. Um, which is definitely something I want to have because we've not got enough people. There we go. So the fishery is completed. So I'm going to order a boat. And then now we've got a... See, so you see here the fishing boat has popped up. Um, you can click to, to ask what the client for that boat is. And that will take you to the fishery. Because I've ordered the boat from this fishery. Which is going to be fulfilled by the boatyard. So I'm going to assign a worker to this boatyard. And hopefully one's going to be found shortly. Uh, there we go. So we've assigned a worker. Osto. Ostro. Ostrozor. Um, and he's currently collecting wood from the wood shop. He'll take that wood to his boatyard. It may take him a couple of trips. And then he'll start construction on a boat, which he'll then deliver to the fishery. And once that boat has been delivered, I'll then assign um, a person to work at the fishery to fish. But in the meantime, we should now hopefully have some spare workers. Um, yeah, we've got some spare men looking for jobs. So... We can now start thinking about placing another house, which I am going to do. Um, I'm not sure how I'm going to place it there yet. Yeah, we'll place it up here, sort of up against the woods a little bit, like that. And then this should be a house for an immigrant to move into. You Notice know, now, now we've headed into autumn, all the leaves have fell off the trees, and so we've got these dark patches of leaves around all the houses, which is kind of cool cool little touch. I suspect as well you've also we've got uh, things like decoration so I can place trees um, in and around the town centre if I like to and I suspect they'll also drop leaves in a similar way which is quite a nice little pattern there. So they've started construction on that house which is great. Uh, has he started building my boat yet? No he's still collecting more wood. Oh the work for some has been, been unassigned. Hopefully a new one will be assigned shortly. Because he needs to collect more wood to fulfil this boat request. Um, our hay, yes, our hay barrack is now full. We've got a full supply of hay, so I may as well start construction on another hay barrack. Because I might as well just build up our supplies of supplies of hay. There's no point in not having any. So I'm positioning that nicely there. Sort of things I don't mind them being nicely stacked next to each other because it's sort of thing that probably would have happened. 
Yep, so our worker is again collecting more wood, look. Um, he needs 10 wood, so he's off to, so he's gone to collect a cart. He's now heading over to the forester, picked up some wood, and he's now bringing it back. Oh, it's snowing. Wow. Wow, that got white pretty quickly, didn't it? So it's now December. And we've got plenty of wood. I can't complete an order in winter. So because it's now covered in snow, and it doesn't look like the lake is completely frozen, but it looks like it's probably pretty cold. So um, we no longer can build an order there. So I may cancel him. There's no point having a worker there um, if there's nothing he can do. He might as well be helping with the construction effort on the houses. Which is what he's doing. We'll also look at putting up a you know, trade a market stall somewhere down the town centre. Yeah, somewhere around here is the side of the road. There we go, which can be manned by a woman. Since I have a sort of a surplus of women at the moment. She will in time serve fish once the man has finished constructing his boat. And then we've got a fisherman and then when the lake... Oh, now it looks frozen. I think the lake is now frozen over. Yes, look at that. It's now completely solid. That's nice that it's a little bit dynamic, it doesn't just freeze as soon as it hits December, but it just starts to freeze, it starts to get colder, and then as the temperature continues to drop, it freezes over. Good job we've got everyone housed in time for winter, which is nice. Uh, everyone's collecting hay now, for, uh, hay, collecting clay for this little village house out on the outskirts. And hopefully this, we might be able to attract an immigrant. There's not enough food for sale, but sometimes... Um, with a spare house you can still attract people if you fulfill three of the criteria. If your house is currently vacant, no jobs, not enough. So let's have a look. Now we're sort of in winter and we've got sort of a few spare resources. Um, hopefully we should have enough nails, which I think we do. Yeah, we've got plenty of nails. So let's have a look at building a town hall. Nice big government building. Um, I want this to sort of be central right in the sort of town centre. don't want to block that road entirely. I'm going to place it somewhere like there. And we'll see what functions this gives us. I have not yet ever built a town hall, so I have no idea what it does. It may not do anything other than look cool, but we shall soon find out. It's going to require quite a lot of supplies. There's quite a lot to be delivered before building starts. Um, hopefully as well it should give us... Everything bar food for sale. I wondered if that was going to be enough for uh, immigrants to move in. But perhaps not. Perhaps not. We shall see. Keep an eye on this figure in this top corner. See if it goes up from 20 over the course of the next couple of minutes. Put the foundation laid on our town hall. And we're laying the outskirts of it now. It's kind of cool. Uh, people are taking a bit of a rest, I think. Stop resting, peasants. Get to work. Construct my town hall. Everyone's also, I've noticed, everyone's now in thick, uh, like, coats and cloaks because it's obviously a lot colder. Just kind of a nice little touch. People are a lot sort of uh, lighter dressed during the summer, which obviously makes sense. But again, it's all little touches that just make this game a little bit better than, than most, I feel. Okay, so the walls are coming up. Starting to come up quite nicely. So hopefully we should just see this town hall built in this episode before we run out of time. I'm trying to keep these episodes to sort of around about the 20 minute mark. Um, sometimes they'll be a little bit longer, sometimes a little bit shorter. But it's nice to keep them to sort of a rough sort of consistency. Um, there we go, delivering supplies. Yeah, there we go, starting to get the walls up. They're like two tier walls, so they obviously require quite a lot of clay. Uh, oh, you can see here in the building log the amount of clay that's required. People are working almost full time to transport clay to and from two different buildings. And the clay is obviously being used to construct sort of the mud mud and the straw type walls, I suspect. Obviously haven't come across bricks at this point in time. Well, not at this point in time in this country. So we're now coming into mid-January. Uh, hopefully it's probably only be, I don't know when it'll be March, maybe. But we still, I think we started in March and there wasn't any snow on the ground then. So hopefully come March the snow should start to clear away. Which would be nice. 
we go. Right, so now back onto the roof supports. This is going to be all across there. Yep. Ah, and the roof trusses. That's quite a tall building, this one. Starting to come together quite nicely. And I have to collect more supplies, and the workers are all having a rest. No one else has moved into my house though yet, which is a little bit disappointing. And because my river's still frozen, I can't build my boat, which again, a little bit disappointing. I'm looking forward to getting the boat, but that's probably going to be the third episode before we get any any boating action. So let's see, this is starting to come together. You can see the construction progress in the to the top right corner. Quite a lot to build on this one. Come on, peasants, stop resting on the benches and get working. It's also nice, again, one thing I noticed about this game, people actually have to collect the water. If you look in each of the houses, they have a supply of water. Oh, and to see that the supply of potatoes is starting to get a little bit low as well. Um, but they have a supply of water, and when that supply runs low, they, normally the woman, I believe, the family, comes out and actually has to collect it from the well. It's not like uh, many games where a well just has an area effect, or that sort of thing, where you place a well and it just supplies somehow magically all the houses in the area. People actually have to come and collect it. Here we go, we're just starting to finish off, look. But oh, hey, so, we now have a town hall. Uh, and our mayor is now based there. Ah, so our um, our little town centre, which was was in a tent, has now been moved into the town hall. So we can look at... Ah, this is cool, we get some population statistics. Uh, wealth distribution, I guess this is... Green is poor. <laughs> and then uh, yellow is slightly wealthier. Okay, and we can look at the economy. That gives us our stored resources. Oh, and we also now get... Um, okay, we've got like a bit of a treasury, which we didn't have before. So income. Our income from housing rent, local sales. And we're not going to get any exports. Um, salaries. Salary must be things like some of the workers and I think people like our mayor. Things that cost like that, and then our net loss, which we are, we are definitely making a net loss so far. Our salary is far outstripping our our income. Okay, that's kind of cool. Kind of cool to know. I didn't realise this was gold up here in the top right corner, so that's why that's continually going down. But we've still got quite a large amount, and if we're only losing a hundred a year, we've still got another nine years worth of gold yet before we get into any trouble. So I hope you've enjoyed this episode, guys. It's been sort of a little bit of a frosty one but quite a cool one. Uh, I'm pleased we've got our town hall built and our village is now starting to come, come along, starting to get quite nice. I hope you've enjoyed this video guys. If you have, please like, comment, subscribe, all the good stuff. Thanks guys and I'll see you on the next one.